YouTube, team keep it clean, what's going on, it's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be a part of it, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can go to patreon.com and just send it right there on a the DM. It's a lot easier for you. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. And Team Keep It Clean, let's keep this thing moving. We got some fire questions like we always do because y'all continue to bring it. I love you. Let's get into it. First question came from a guy, Jamie. He said, hey, hope you and the family are doing well. Okay, I don't agree with the two-point conversion. At any time, you take the points that are there. My questions are early. Do you think we will go O-line strong in the draft since Lamar got hurt or 50-50 with the D-line? Uh, and do you think we will have some new coaches, not Hobbs or Wink? And the Ravens are who we thought they were, but we are not letting them off the hook. <laughs> Shout out to Dennis Green. LOL. All right, so this was a um, quick question, but a loaded question. Um, so do you think we'll go O-line strong in the draft since Lamar got hurt or 50-50 with the defensive line? It, it got to be a healthy mix of both. Um, but O-line certainly has to be retooled. They, uh, and I think it'll be a mix of draft uh, and also free agency. Free agency a little bit less, um, but definitely draft. I think they should draft probably about two or three offensive linemen, definitely a couple of tackles, um, and, and somebody for the interior as well. We'll see what happens with uh, Bradley Bozeman. Uh, and will we have some new coaches, not Hobbs or Wink? I don't think so. I don't think there will be any new coaches based off of right here, right now, December 13th at 9, 13 p.m. I would say no, because um, that's no, I, I don't think that'll happen. Uh, and he said the Ravens are who we thought they were. And we ain't letting them off the hook. Yeah, we, we certainly not letting them off the hook at all. Next question came from Alonzo. He said, uh, do you think Lamar should wear a glove all year? Do you think he should wear uh, his visor all year? I like. I don't think it really makes a difference. Whatever he's more comfortable with and will allow him to perform to the best of his abilities, wear what you want to wear. And do you think Lamar should do what Darius Leonard does and have a one-on-one -on -one film study with a QB like a Mike Vick or RG3 or even a Cam Newton? What's, what would a film study with any of those guys do? Like, I mean, he, he got to study film, period. Um, it's like, that's, that's, that's essential. To being a good player in the league, you got to go that extra mile and study film. So that's a requirement anyway. If he decides to study it with Vic or Cam or RG3 or anybody, okay, cool. Study it with him. Um, the more the merrier. But I don't think it studying it with those guys would make much of a difference. And I'm sure he's studied it with those guys before, uh, especially Vic and RG3. Vic because I believe he was like a mentor to Lamar or something like that. And RG3 because they were teammates. Um, but I don't, I don't really think that would really move the needle for Lamar. Any positives we can take? Next question came from my guy, Les. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is good with you and the fam. Uh, with all that's happened lately for the Ravens, it's been tough, and I've seen a lot of people turning on our team and giving up on them like the season's now over. I know it's been frustrating for us fans as this season has really been rough for us. I think with all the perceived doom and gloom, we need some positive vibes from you, my friend. So my question to you, what are the positive things we can try and remind ourselves of in the face of this adversity? Well, that um, uh, that the Ravens at this point of the season, they're eight and five, and they are still in the first place in the AFC North. Uh, they control their own seating to the playoffs. If they win out, hey, boom, they're in. And of course, there's some scenarios where if they don't win every single game, they could still get in. Uh, everything just depends on so much at that point. But right now, they are in control of what happens to them moving forward. Um, another positive would be uh, Tyler Huntley. We know, of course, Lamar Jackson, it has been announced that he has an ankle sprain. Uh, they didn't clarify if it's a low ankle sprain or a high ankle sprain, but they did, it did say it's not a high ankle sprain, so I'm assuming it's a low ankle sprain, but whatever. So Lamar Jackson is going to be out, even though Harbaugh said, oh, yeah, we anticipate Lamar Jackson playing versus the Packers. He ain't playing versus the Packers. Uh, and if he does, oof, boy, um, it just worries me. Anyway, because uh, I just I would feel like they would be rushing Lamar. Um, with, uh, oof, what else? Other positives. I mean, if we just talking the Ravens, uh, they make every single game fun to watch. 
every single game fun to watch. And they, this year, they've only got like beat to a bloody pulp once, and that was by the Bengals. And for, for a half, for a little, a little more than a half, it was a close game. So more positives. But again, their record, eight and, eight and four, eight and five. Man, now I forgot. I think eight and five. Eight and five. Uh, so they only went inside. And again, with their record, with their losses, minus the Bengals game, well, actually, even including the Bengals game, all of their issues are fixable. Well, maybe the offensive line. That's the, that's the biggest one. That's a question mark for me. But besides the offensive line, so many of their issues are fixable. So that's a positive to take from right now. He said, I know we've had injuries, and obviously losing Lamar Jackson is worrying. Our offensive line obviously continues to look all kinds of bad. And our coaches uh, or, and our coaches seem like they just do not have the answers at all. Despite all of this, we are still somewhat in a decent position in the AFC North. Oh, man, see, you had already answered the question. I guess I should have just kept reading. He said, over to my man. Give us some of the positive vibes. We sure do need some right now. Keep on believing. Don't let hate or negativity ruin your day. Appreciate your content. I, I, I love that. Uh, I love that last that last part uh, because that that was really really special and that's very very true uh, and that goes for anybody because uh, you will have people that will hate on you it's gonna happen um, and no matter what it is that you do for work whether you at work school wherever it's it's gonna happen but don't let it ruin your day straight up uh, because if you let something like that ruin your day, then, then you give them like that power over you, and it's just they shouldn't have that, especially negative people. Uh, so anyway, I love y'all. This was just a, a, such a great. I, I, I love, I love the ending more than the question. I, I love the message more than the question. I appreciated the question too now, but I, I really appreciated that message. So so thank you very much, uh, Les. Next question came from my guy Clarence. He said, I watched the press with Coach Hobbs today, and he read from notes on papers about the coaching staff. This is why I believe Lamar is gone for the season, and the Ravens will press the reset button, and the entire coaching staff will get fired, including the head coach. The next head coach hire will be Leftwich or be enemy. What are your thoughts on this? I just, I don't see the Eric DaCosta doing that. I really don't. Um, I wouldn't be necessarily opposed to it, but I, I don't see him doing that. I just, I think that would be something just, that would, that would be way left field for Eric DaCosta. And I, and I know Eric DaCosta is very results-driven. He's results-based, as he should be. Um, but I just feel like he's more cutthroat when it comes to players rather than coaches. But depending on how the season goes... We'll see. Next question came from my guy Lisa, and he said, Hey, Graven, hope you're doing well. I've recently been thinking on something that might be a small part to Lamar's recent struggles. During the last two seasons, Lamar has had Mark Ingram on the sidelines, constantly motivating him and the rest of the team to win the game. Is it possible that there is a lack of presence of a constant hype man on the sidelines like Ingram that has taken a toll on Lamar's motivation and confidence, causing him to struggle mentally and play seemingly demotivated? Ah. <sighs> That could play a part, but I feel like if if it was if it was a re like for Lamar struggling this bad, cause he ain't got no hype man. No, that's not no, that's not a good enough reasoning for that. You you shouldn't. It's nice and somebody to motivate you is great. That's phenomenal, but that shouldn't be a requirement for you to do well at your job. And we know again, Lamar got a lot of other stuff that's going on around him that's just not in the best shape. <laughs> uh, but he he does have some improvement that uh, he he can make as well. So no, I I, I believe that like no, I I don't think that that is a big. I mean I know you did say it could be a small part, but I don't think like that would be a reason like somebody would just be in a slump like this. This has got to be deeper than that. Next question came from Shantae. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope everything is good with you and the fam." Unfortunately, I wasn't able to look at the game because I was at work, uh, but it was cool rocking with you through the stream. Oh, you was in the stream, man. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, hearing the description of the game though made me kind of glad that I didn't watch it on TV. On that note, I heard that Lamar Jackson got taken off the field on a cart and that he might have a high ankle sprain and be out for a while. Well, that got cleared up because they said it's not a high ankle sprain, still ankle sprain though. Uh, but anyway, here's my question. 
uh, and kind of a it's kind of long, so brace yourself. Do you think the coaches will have no choice but to do a bit of tweaking or a lot of tweaking per se, given to what happened to Lamar? Because I'm pretty sure they do not want the same thing to happen to Tyler Huntley. I agree with you when you say that this team is arrogant and they don't want to change things that have been successful in the past or now. But because of the refusal to change, like offensive line, Lamar paid a hefty price and he got hurt and it will probably and he'll probably miss multiple games because of it. Why do they refuse to acknowledge that the offensive line and offense is bad? I uh, hope your brain is good from this email. Just wanted to vent a little. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, have a great rest of your day. All right. So the first question was, do you think the coaches will have to no choice but to do a bit of tweaking? Or even a lot, per se, given what happened to Lamar Jackson. So the same thing doesn't happen to Tyler. Well, yeah. Because they are different quarterbacks. They have different styles. Even though they do a lot of the stuff similarly and it's it's crazy I, I just remember so many different plays watching them and thinking like oh man if tyler huntley put on a number eight jersey you would think that it was lamar jackson um i think tyler has a, a, a quicker release than lamar um and again with tyler huntley he could just he plays more freely he plays more more loosely than lamar this year uh because this Again, I, I I think what I said with Lamar, I think what's thrown him off so much was just all the, the beating that he was taking. And I, I do think he's been injured, but I think that beating that he has been taking from the beginning of the season um, is just, just messed up his mentals with the game. He just got to sort of reel it back in, um, and they got to, like, just get back to basics almost because uh, he's just – I feel like fundamentally he's just – he's he's losing his grip fundamentally, and they just got to reel him on in. Um, and even in the Browns game, we didn't even get to see him too much in the Browns game. Uh, but you just don't want him to just go backwards. And we know he's going to snap out of this whole little slump uh, whenever he comes back. Uh, and we know it's not going to last forever. Because, I mean, having have a Patrick Mahomes, too. Patrick Mahomes was in a little slump early this season. A bunch of people like, oh, man, Patrick Mahomes, what's going on with him? Oh, man, is he sorry now? And now he's just over there killing it. So, I mean, with Patrick Mahomes... He's just throwing, throwing a lot more interceptions than we were used to. Um, but, I mean, we weren't complaining on our end. <laughs> so, Lamar, he'll, he'll be fine, man. Um, but with Tyler Huntley, yeah, they will have to change up stuff a little bit. They'll have to adjust to their situation. So, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, she said, uh, we'll, oh, sorry. Uh, why do this team refuse to acknowledge that the offensive line and the offense are bad? Well, I mean, you don't want to come out and say, oh, man, our, our offensive line is bad. It, they're, they're bad. But you just want to make sure you're putting your best five out there. Um, and if these are the best five, okay, cool. Let's just run with it. Uh, but that's on, uh, well, Tyler Huntley now since Lamar probably going to be out. But that's on the quarterback, too. It's on the offensive coordinator. It's on the quarterback. It's on them to work with each other. Because they both know they got a bad offensive line. But it's, all, it's on them to work with each other to counter that bad offensive line as best they can. They can't hide everything, but they can hide a lot. Again, quick passing game. Quick passing game. That's going to help a lot because the offensive line won't have to block as much. Um, so, yeah, I, and she said, I hope your brain is still good from reading this email. I, I think it is, but it is messed up even before I read the emails. But I'm, I'm straight. Free Bateman. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, man, we should have won that game today against the Browns. Snoop played great minus his turnovers and overthrown balls to Hollywood, which would have won us the game, by the way. The way Snoop spread the ball around is the way Lamar needs to get those around him involved. Snoop saw mismatches and let Bateman go up for those 50-50 balls and almost got him involved in the offense. Oh, and also got him involved in the offense. Excuse me. Do you think Lamar can take some notes from Snoop to help this offense grow? Well, yeah, for sure. Um, and, and yeah, that's it's, it's something we've been talking about even before we watch uh, Tyler Huntley play and just Lamar getting different guys involved. Um, and a lot of times it was it's just Mark Andrews in Hollywood and he you he trusts those guys so much. He trusts those two so much. Um, but yeah, he does have to get different guys involved because when teams start keying in on on, on five and eighty nine, then it's like all right, you, you got other options, you got other weapons too. And, and it's about Rashad Bateman being on the field as well. Because there'll be a lot of times in, in, in the Lamar games where it, there'll be plays where Lamar just ain't, ain't see him, something like that. But there'll be other times when he just, he'll be on the sideline. And it'd be like, what is, why? 
So, yeah, I agree with you. Hashtag free Bateman. Next question came from my guy Isaac. He said, Hey, Graven, how are you holding up after the loss from this past Sunday? Oh, I'm, I'm good. The, the losses, I mean, again, Ravens games are fun. They're fun. Whether the Ravens win, whether the Ravens lose, when they win, it's even more fun. Um, but I'm, a loss is, is cool. I ain't, I ain't one of them people. I used to be a long time ago. If, if Ravens lost, I would be like mopey the whole day. I'd be like upset. I'd be sad the whole day. But that, that's, those times are like long gone. Long gone. Um, cause it's just, it's not worth, like, why, why let something like that ruin your whole day? Now, if, when they win, especially if they win the Super Bowl, that could make your whole, that could make your whole, like, long, that could make a long time for you. That could make, make a whole lot of your days for you. But, um, nah, it's, to let it ruin your day and even let it ruin your week, weekend, no, the, it's not worth it. But anyway, he said, I wanted to talk about Lamar. I've seen criticism from my own fans, as I'm sure you have too, but I can't deny that those critics have some valid points. Huntley is getting the ball out on time and is actually spreading the wealth to our entire wide receiver court. Uh, he looks more comfortable in the pocket and more explosive on his runs and scrambles. Long story short, I don't know why or how, but our team looked way better out there with Huntley than they did with Jackson. My question is, why is that the case? It makes no sense in my mind. Much love from IHOP. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I think Lamar's hurt. I remember and J Jadavian Clowney, he said it. He said, man, th their backup looked faster than Lamar. I was hoping Lamar would come back out there. And that's why I said, ooh, you, you, better, you better hope that y'all don't play the Ravens again and no playoffs or nothing like that. And Lamar plays. He's going to show you something fail. Anyway, um, Tyler Huntley, he's healthy. Lamar, he's not. And even before the ankle injury, I don't think he was healthy. Because he just did not look like himself. He hasn't looked like himself. When he runs and takes off, we're like, well, me, I'm like, whoa, like, he just, he don't look as fast. He doesn't. He like, he doesn't look as swift. He just, he doesn't, man. Something is, something is wrong with him. Like, physically, I think. Something is wrong with him. Um, but, oh, but why did the, the offense look a lot better? I think it's because Tyler Huntley, he wasn't playing hero ball. That's why. Um, with Lamar, uh... A lot of the plays, sometimes there will be these long developing plays. Sometimes there will be short plays that he just missed. But with Lamar, he, uh, he was holding on to the ball for a while. Uh, and a lot of the plays that were called are these, these deep plays. Um, and with Tyler Huntley, there were some deep plays that were called too. And, uh, but with him, there were a lot of short stuff, a lot of intermediate stuff. Uh, but he, he just made his decisions faster. He made his decisions faster, and that could have been a, a plan. Once Lamar went down, they could have been like, all right, we need to really switch this thing up and really uh, have that short passing game uh, just ready. Who knows? But with Tyler Huntley, he just I think it, the offense looked better because, again, Tyler Huntley was playing more instinctively than Lamar has been playing recently. Lamar hasn't been using his instincts. He just seemed to be overthinking stuff. And Tyler Huntley he was like, okay, there goes my receiver. I'm hitting him. I'll take these little five yards. All right, there go my receiver. Oh, seven yards. All right, cool. And he would just make the decision, get the ball out quick. But L Lamar wasn't doing that. So I think that's why the offense looked well. Those are some of the reasons why I think the offense looked better. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, the Ravens team has been terrible this year. Wow. Uh, the offensive line is playing like they're the worst offensive line of all time. Hmm. Lamar has been trying to do too much. He's been throwing too many picks, and he seems to run into sacks too. Uh, but one of the worst parts of this team is the defense. Not to get me wrong, the defense has played pretty good currently, but the main problem with the defense is the secondary. They have been getting beat toward the end of games when we really need to stop the offense like we did against the Steelers. But we also need to have better coaching on the sideline and better play calling by Greg Roman. I don't know if it's just me. The Ravens have been bad. Uh, we might have won some games so far, but this year isn't made for us. The team has had holes all over the roster, and we didn't do anything to even try to fix them. All that I know is that the Ravens are best when healthy. I mean, you could say that about any team, really. Uh, but So keep your heads up, Ravens flock. P.S. I think Greg Roman has just been playing heavy since 2019 because we were doing so well at first, and we were just going downhill since 2018. All right. Oh, since 2019. Excuse me. Um, so this is a lot right here. Uh, with, with the part about... Uh, this year wasn't made for us. The team has had holes all over the roster, and we didn't even do anything to try to fix them. The, the Ravens are very limited on what they could do. And, like, again, y'all know me. If, if it's something with the Ravens, whether I agree, disagree, I'll let you know. 
Ain't no Homer. Ain't no oh man. Everything that the do that the Ra- that the Ravens do is right. That are no, y'all know that already. But for this, like they they were limited on what they could do, and and how can you replace? You can't replace twenty people on IR, and I think it's more. How you you lose your first string, your second string, and your third string running back? How do you replace that? How? You lose your starting corner, like MP. How do you replace that? Now again, with Xavier Howard, they could have tried that, and and I wish we knew what the details of whatever the Ravens and Dolphins talked about were. I wish we knew the details, so we could know what the Ravens were willing to give up and what they weren't willing to give up. But anyway, um, that's hard to replace. Then Marlon Humphrey, he went down. How do you like Deshaun Elliott? Your starting safety goes down in the middle of the season. How do you replace that? Ronnie Stanley, all pro left tackle, he goes down after the, the the first game. How do you replace that? Like your 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 defensive end, starting defensive end, Derek Wolf, he goes down. Like Nick Boyle, your best blocking tight, one of the best blocking tight ends in the league, he goes down. How like I, I just I don't understand how they were supposed to fix that. Like, fix all of that. They, I mean, they they tried with the running backs. Devontae Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, Latavius Murray. They tried Tyson for like two games, and then they're like, oh, we're done with him. But it's, 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 it's very hard to, you, you can't replace everything. LJ Ford, another one. Your linebacker, they lost Malik Harrison for a while. Like it, so that that part I just I I I can't agree with that part, with how they didn't even do anything to try to fix all the holes that they had, cause they they came into this season, they went into training camp with a roster that was just beautiful. They had depth in so many places, like pretty much everywhere they had depth, man. Everywhere, everywhere they had so much depth, and it was like let's go. But then all the injuries just started happening, and they kept happening, and they have not stopped happening. Injuries haven't stopped for the Ravens all year. So I, I just, what were they supposed to do? I, I just don't understand what they were supposed to do. Um, now, as far as the defense, you said the main problem with the defense is the secondary. They've been getting beat toward the end of the game, so we really need to stop. So with the defense, it hasn't been in every single game, but it's been in a lot to where the defense – and early on in the game, they hold it down, but the offense does not. So the defense is right back out there again, right back out there again, right back out there again, over and over and over. So when they have these fourth quarter collapses, overtime collapses, late game collapses, it's almost like what do you expect? Because they hold it down for so long early on in the game, but the offense decides, oh, we want to wake up late. And they do wake up late. But then the defense is like, oh, man, y'all, y'all just waking up? Oh, we about to go to sleep. Our schedules are off. So it's just a really tough situation um, for the whole team to be in. And, and injury certainly didn't help. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. But the, the, the part where he said uh, that this is not our year. Uh, yeah, this year isn't made for us. It ain't over till it's over. keep it clean. See my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it, right and grave it. Shout out to Graven.